He is one of the best known practi practitioners of the art of modernist cuisine. He is the owner of Flip Burger Boutique with locations in Atlanta and Birmingham. HD1, which is in Atlanta. He has a brand new restaurant coming out also in Atlanta called The Spence. And he won the title of Top Chef All-Star. Ladies and gentlemen, you're excited already? Let's say hello to Chef Richard Blaze right here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Hello, Chef hey, Blaze. Are Welcome to the World Culinary right. Showcase. All right. I think I have a bigger crowd than Fabio Viviani. The biggest crowd so far. Where is the he? Whole, Where is that guy? Event. He's Who not knows? here. If he was here, he'd be up here kissing me on the cheek. Oh, boy. I'm sure of it. So. Thank you for being here. We're delighted to have you. What are you preparing for the audience oh. today? Well, of, of course, you know, some of you may know me from Top Chef. So in the spirit of Top Chef, this is like a quick fire challenge. I have no idea what I'm about to prepare. Do any of you believe that? No, I have kind of an idea, kind of an idea. Um, I have uh, my awesome chefs from Pro Start, right? You guys are from Wisconsin, right? Let's give it up for Pro Start. Like any, like any good true executive, they've done all the work so they can get all the credit or all the blame, depending on how this turns out. Um, I also want to thank you to uh, President Bill Clinton for opening for me. Um, you know, I can remember when I opened for Paula Dean, and now the president's opening for me. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a nice, crazy road. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about uh, one of the dishes that we've been up to. Did anyone see my nightline appearance the other day? No one stays up that late. One person, all right. Um, so we're going to kind of do a, something similar to that, that demo that we did. And I've been, I'm opening up a restaurant called The Spence, which is, The Spence is sort of a, um, a Scottish word for pantry, or like where you would store your food a long time ago before you had a refrigerator, or basically the walk-in of a restaurant, right? Where we all know a lot of chefs conduct all of their business in the walk-in, right? Um, and, and this is a dish, it's gonna be sort of casual American food with a little bit of uh, modern flair, I guess. And not to put you on the spot, but I would say, sorry, that's oh, okay. right off the bat, that's what how we're starting need? this relationship. I'm here for you. No, what but I, I mean, kind of introduced me as like, you know, modernist cuisine guy. That's right? what they wrote right I know, here. that's what they wrote, and that's what you see. Like, I'll tell you this, when you go to grab a tank of liquid nitrogen, cameras tend to follow you. But I don't always use liquid nitrogen. There's none in this demo today. And I'm, I, I'm probably less of a modernist chef than most people think. So I just wanted to clear the air and tell you that I'm probably not as big of a molecular gastronomist as you think. And I hope no one leaves now after me saying that, right? Because I feel like, you know, especially in a city like Chicago, so many great modern restaurants, how many people, if you're sitting around tonight, you're figuring out where you want to go to dinner and you're like, I don't know, do I want Italian food? Maybe I want Mexican. Like how often do you say, maybe I want molecular gastronomy? It's just a cold word, no one really says that. So the word I have a problem with more, more, more than anything else. Uh, but we're doing a dish today, it's got a little bit of, I guess, modern, modernity to it. Um, but it's Salisbury steak, all right? Do you guys know what Salisbury steak is? Where's all the lamb, all the stuff for the lamb? Let's bring it up right here. Um, all the ingredients for the lamb, the bones and uh, the, the ground lamb and all of that good stuff and the call fat. Salisbury steak. I grew up eating as a kid because uh, my mom wasn't a great cook. All right, I can say that when she's not here. Um, but Salisbury steak, it's, like a, it's basically a hamburger, right? I don't know why they call it steak. It's really sort of like a hamburger patty. But it's kind of inspired by, by that, those meals I ate as a kid. So we're going to make our own sort of version of Salisbury steak. And, I, and I'm going to ruining the surprise because someone's already seen it on Nightline the other day. Um, but we're going to make Salisbury steak with bones in it. Because usually it doesn't have a bone. It's just sort of like a puck of meat. We're going to drop this over here. Where is the, uh, the call fat? And where is... Let's get a pan on with a little hot oil. The call fat, great. All right, so Salisbury steak, it's basically ground meat. So the first riff on this dish that we're gonna make is that we're gonna use lamb. Because I mean, I kind of feel like lamb is like one of the, it's like a chef-y meat, isn't it? Everyone likes lamb? You guys okay? Are there, are there any questions, comments, or concerns so far? No concerns? If you do have any questions or comments, we do have uh, a roving reporter who will get into the audience, so really ask anything. Recipe for the hair. Does anyone know the recipe for the hair? It's in my upcoming cookbook, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you one recipe away. It's equal parts duck fat and liquid nitrogen. <laughs> nice. I should have opened for Glenn. They, we were waiting for like an hour there. I should have jumped out there. Um, all right, where was I? Salisbury steak. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some, some ground lamb, and I've done a little bit of the work ahead because it takes, it takes some time. Some beautiful ground lamb. Uh, and then we basically made like a meatloaf, right? So we have some carrots and onions. And you have a little knife. Here we go. 
And I'll, I'll pull this one out of uh, the plastic pouch. And we're using a couple of modern ingredients here. This is one that's somewhat already done. But I can tell you, this is Salisbury steak. Does that look? It looks like a rack of, of lamb. So like, let's be honest. There's no li little kids here. I can use a foul word, right? Kind of. Is that all right? I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm kind of a wise ass, right? So we basically made like a, ri a rack of lamb with ground lamb in it, all right? So we have our, our ground lamb that we then roll up into a cylinder. You have a pan with some oil in it? We can put a little, little turn this pan on, a little drip of oil in it. And we take some call fat, right? So we know call fat. The culinary students just found out, right? This is like sort of the, the a, a lining of that. It, it looks really cool, doesn't it? Call fat's one of those things like, I wish I just had like a really giant picture of call fat in my living room. It's got, it's a certain art, there's a certain beauty to it, right? It's obviously it's very organic. But you wrap this fat around an ingredient. So like here you can see we've wrapped it around the, what is now ground lamb and, and a lamb bone, all right? So it kind of holds the moisture in lean cuts of meat. Like if you're roasting a filet, or in this case, basically we have a lean cut, it's like 80-20 ground lamb, so it's pretty lean. So we need to retain its moisture. So we wrap it in this call, flat, call fat. Questions, comments, concerns so far? We're going to get, where do you buy call fat? Um, you know, any of your, if, if you're in a restaurant, in a restaurant situation, any of your meat vendors, uh, meat purveyors, should be able to source you call fat. It comes in like you guys just saw it for the first time, right? It comes in these giant blocks and you kind of just defrost it. Um, it's inexpensive. And quite honestly, I mean, even like a very traditional, like my food's a lot more traditional than it is modern. Like a crepe net, right? Very classic sort of loose sausage. You wrap this around that and you cook it. Question? Wait, hold on. Let me uh, bring the you mic gotta, up You got a mic Who coming your question? way. All right. Well, you have the question, sir. You have your Please. stations. Let's oh, set up the stations. Where? Oh, back are there. there. Are they cooked now, the carrots? Yeah. So let's um, pull them out. Yes, oil. sir. Question. Uh, let's simmer what them. What type with a of bit fat of, uh, is it? Is it beef fat yes. or is it lamb fat? What type of fat is it? Beef fat or lamb fat? This is this is actually pig. Oh. Yeah. Beef or lamb? This is actually uh, pig. It's an animal. Yeah. Okay. okay. We believe you. Yeah, but it is it, it is from either you know pigs, cows, sheep. I believe. Yeah, it could be from any animal. I believe. All right. All right, so we have our lamb rack. And then you're gonna say probably, well, this is ground lamb, right? That's this, which is pretty loose. How do we keep it to the structure that it stays on the bone? Did anyone have that question? Was it just me? You can just play along. You could just say, I just, matter of fact, I'm gonna look to you every time I have a question. Like, did anyone have that question? Can you just, just to make me feel better about myself? Okay. Um, how, did, how do we get this hamburger to stick to this, these bones? You have the raw bones? The raw lamb bones. Yeah, let's go get, let's go get them. Sorry. Um, we use a secret ingredient that I have in my pocket, which is not going to be as thrilling as I made that sound. All right? But it's called transglutaminase. Right? Are you guys familiar with this? This is where I said I'm not a molecular gastronomist, and then I pull out transglutaminase out of my apron pocket. All right? Transglutaminase is an enzyme, basically. And it's, it's a naturally occurring enzyme. It makes things stick together. It, it, it makes proteins stick together. You're familiar with this? Yes? Wait, wait. We, okay. Got we a, we have uh, one little rule, and that is hands and microphones for nice. questions. Please. You'll, you'll get in trouble. He's, you're in trouble already. That's a, no, sir, you are you'll not in trouble. You'll be up trouble, here. The next three strikes, three strikes you have to come question. up here with me and cook. What's the ratio you use? The ratio for this is uh, basically we take this you know, transglutaminase, which is a white powder, basically. Um, I usually ship this. Because I have a lot of ingredients that are miscellaneous white powders, which makes my trips through airports very fun. <laughs> nice. Who knew you were going to get a little bit of a comedy routine as well? But what we do is we take this and we put it in like, you know something you would put confectioner sugar in and dust a slice of a pie with? We put it in a little sugar, what is that called? A sugar shaker. Thank you very much. See, NRA is all about education. And that's what I've been saying all day long. We're all educating each other, and now I know. Sugar shaker. We put our transglutaminase in the sugar shaker. Make sure when you do that, you label it transglutaminase and not sugar. Because then you have a lemon meringue tart with a bunch of sticky enzyme on the plate. And I don't know what would happen if you did that. But I'm not responsible for it. Just want to make sure. Yes? Uh oh. Is it similar to powdered egg, egg albumin? Uh, is it similar to? Powdered egg, egg albumin. Egg albumin. Um, wow. I'm, I'm not sure what the similarities might be, but certainly there's a stickiness there um, that might, you might be able to use. But I'm, I'm not sure scientifically, um, again, not being a modernist guy, if there's, a, if there's something that 
um, you know, makes those two things similar. But I might try it with egg albumin. That might work. Um, so that's what we do. We take our bones. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Thank you for going to get the bones. We take these bones. Now, the idea here also is that we have these bones in the restaurant from another dish. I, I don't want anyone to think that what I've done is taken the beautiful loin off of a rack of lamb and then through science put a hamburger on, on it for just the sake of doing it, all right? So at my restaurant, we use lamb loin, boneless lamb loin in another preparation. So we have lots of these bones sitting around, which to me always has to be the reasoning behind why you're doing something modern in the first place. It should always be for, you know, flavor or for, you know, using something that normally might, this might only be stock, but now we're actually making it part of a dish instead of just using it just for a sauce. Does that make any sense? So a lot of the young, the pro-start students, not you guys, but the ones I ran into earlier today, they were, had all these questions about molecular gastronomy, and they were like, what's your favorite technique? And I feel like the problem we have with modernist cuisine is we always need to lead through flavor first. And a lot of young students, they want to lead through technique. A lot of you run restaurants, you probably have that young chef who has brought you some uh, Tabasco sauce caviar at some point, like a little cat that's caught a bird on the porch. I mean, like, please, GM, please, restaurateur, please, restaurant, taste my caviar that I made of lemon juice or whatever it is. And you're like, okay, great. What's the reasoning for it? Oh, look at this technique. It doesn't make sense. We only want to use science and technology to make our food more delicious. And if we never start with that, then we're not going down the right path, you know? I feel I got goosebumps from saying that, right? There it is. Good. Awesome. All about flavor. All right, so we've glued, which is an interesting thing to say, but we have with the transglutaminase, glued this hamburger, this uh, lamb, lamb burger, to this rack of lamb. And this is a little bit Franken food, of course, because quite honestly, I could do this with lobster. I could glue anything I want together. I'm, I'm a mad scientist at this point. I have transglutaminase. I can take a lobster tail and now glue it to a filet mignon, and we have a Franken food surf and turf like you've never seen before. Or maybe some of you who live in Chicago have seen before. It's a lot of modern restaurants. All right, we'll get on with it. I'm long-winded, I apologize. Questions, comments, concerns? We have so a question far. right over we here, do. Chef Blaze, right. way over here. Can you use xanthan gum instead of the little white powder to glue it, or is it not? Yeah, I don't, xanthan gum is, um, you know, uh, what I love about some of these ingredients, xanthan gum especially, is like, we're, oh, let's grab this out of here. Can you get some tongs and grab that out of there? Um, can you grab some tongs and grab that out? Uh, xanthan gum, where do you find it in the store? Do you know? Does xanthan gum sound like a scary ingredient to most people? It does. It sounds like, and some chefs use the word chemical, which I think is awful. It sounds like a chemical, right? But where do you find it if you buy it at a Whole Foods or a... The gluten-free You find aisle. it in the, And you find it in the health food aisle. So I think that's also important when, some, when I'm using some of these ingredients, that like these ingredients that we, you know, sometimes the media calls chemicals. Um, yeah, just pull it right out of there. Um, it, we find it in the health food aisle. So it's like, it's a natural ingredient, right? But xanthan gum is a thickener. Xanthan gum thickens ingredients without having to reduce them, which is kind of the beauty of it. So if we had a beautiful uh, fruit juice, per se, um, of, um, you know, we had a pineapple juice, and we wanted to thicken it without reducing it and changing its flavor, we buzz in a little xanthan gum, and we now have pineapple coulis. I said pineapple juice, right? Okay. Then we have pineapple coulis. So it's kind of neat to make, it's, it's great for sauce work. You, and, it's, and it's great on the economic level. Sorry to turn this into a xanthan gum conversation. Obviously, that's not where we started, but thank you. Um, xanthan gum thickens things like red wine sauce. Every, anyone knows what red wine sauce is, right? Does anyone know the food cost on uh, an ounce of red wine sauce? How many rest serious restaurateurs are out there? It's like 60 cents to reduce like a bunch of bottles of red wine to make a beautiful little glaze. It's expensive. So an ingredient like xanthan gum enables us to achieve the texture that we want without having to over-reduce that wine, we actually can save money through a lot of these ingredients. Um, that's my economic rant of the day. All right, so now we have our, our, our Salisbury steak. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook it sous vide. So you saw me go over there and grab one out of the, uh, the vacuum pouch that's over there. So we put this in one of our uh, plastic pouches. Right, you guys are familiar with sous vide cooking? All right, last year I did a whole sous vide demo, so I'm not gonna get too far into it, but sous vide cooking, cooking, cooking. Told you I opened for Paula Dean once. Yes, what's that? I'm, I'm, I can say cooking, good, great. Say it again. I said you're in Chicago, you could say cooking. Absolutely, so I'm cooking, 
this uh, Salisbury steak, and I'm going to cook it. Sous vide enables me to cook it at a very precise temperature, especially when I'm co cooking something somewhat lean, like this, this ground lamb right here. I can cook it exactly mid-rare all the way through. Um, of, of course, let's grab one of these pouches out of here. Of course, for uh, the restaurant or the restaurateur, the amazing thing about cooking sous vide is, um, like, say we're braising a piece of meat. Awesome. That's okay. It might just explode. It won't. Don't you guys scared? I like it there. You guys, chef. The student's like, chef, this is what happens in my kitchen. That's bubbling over there. It happens a lot with the nitrogen tank, especially when I'm doing like a media piece, like, you know, we're doing Nightline or whatever. And they're like, your nitrogen tank is hissing at us. This is like two days before I get there. And everyone's freaked out. But we have our, our sous vide pouch. And the beauty of sous vide, real quick, not to go into a whole sous vide demo. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Um, is that it keeps all of the flavor inside of the pouch, enables us to cook at a very precise temperature. For something like asabuco, traditional braise, we can then individually portion these things so that if we're in a restaurant serving 36 asabucos a night and we only serve 24, that we don't have to worry about the last 12 asabucos drying out in a hotel pan in the oven, we actually can control our product better. Um, so I'm a big proponent of sous vide, although I don't believe that everything should be cooked sous vide. That's kind of the world we live in right now. All of these big sous vide chefs now are kind of, oh, well, sous vide's great, I love it. There's a couple of things that I like to cook traditionally, and I'm, I'm the same way. Uh, brisket is one of those things. All right, so now we have our, our lamb that we've cooked for two hours at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what this is. Lamb cooked two hours, 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey, Fabio Viviani just showed up, guys. Fabio Viviani in the back row. Pay, pay attention, you might learn something. Pay. No, I know, but I love you so much, I just had to give you a shout out. I really just, you guys know we have this bromance, but I really do love Fabio. And I make, I make fun of him because I'm jealous of him. It's that simple. He's so good looking, he's a great guy. And he also, if you love Italian food, he cooks, the, he, he made a meatball one time off camera. Like when we're in Top Chef, we actually cook when we're back home, like, you know, in, the, in, our, in, our, in our house or whatever, like we get to cook. And like I learn a lot from, I learn more from the chefs on the show when we're in those environments than when we're competing. One, because I can't watch what they're doing when we're, com we're competing. But one day Fabio made these meatballs. It's like equal parts meat and ricotta cheese, right? It's his mama's recipe. I don't know if I believe all that stuff. And it's my mama's recipe. But anyway, best meatballs I ever had. A lot of, you know, the guys, he is good looking and charming. He's also a talent, he's a very talented chef. Let's give it up one more time, Fabio Viviani. Oh, and we have a new show coming out in the, in the winter. You guys know this, right? Life yeah. After Top Chef. Do you, are oh. you, guys, you guys don't know this? Oh, well, I'm, we, I'm we, serious. We can put a new title on it, Life with Richard Blaze. And Fabio Viviani. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Life After Top Chef documents our lives. Uh, and there are four, four uh, chefs featured. Fabio, myself, Spike Mendelson, who's running around here somewhere. He's back at the home. He's probably uh, making he's a soup or something. He's doing something. And, and, and Jen Carroll. So that's going to come out, I think, in December. Hopefully you guys will watch that. And that's what I'm worried, because it's covering our lives. So I'm worried as a dad and husband that now that side of my world is going to be exposed. I'm a little nervous. I know I know how to cook. I don't know if I'm a good, you know, be a good dad and a husband. That's different. On camera, it's tough. You know what I mean? All right. Enough of that. Am I boring you? Should I slow down? I had a giant cup of coffee. Energy's good? Energy's good? A little low? A little, little high? Keep going? Okay. Now we're going to cook. We've done a lot of talking, now we're going to cook. So we have our, 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 our Salisbury lamb. All right, and now we have our, 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 our pan over here. And now we're going to cook this traditionally. We need a little bit of, how about some garlic? Can you guys find me some garlic? And then let's clear this table. And you guys need to be working on your carrot puree and the gnocchi. We're almost done. So you got to keep the pressure up. I know they're students. That wasn't mean, was it? When I was a younger chef, I was the meanest chef. Just so everyone knows. I, some of you think I'm a nice guy, perhaps. But when I was young and like just coming up, I was like baby Gordon Ramsay. It was awful. I would, I really was. And I'm trying not to be like that anymore. Every once in a while it comes out. But I really, I was just really mean for no reason at all. Have I been mean to you, Ryan, at all? Uh, yeah. no. Not yet. He's really, he really so wants to say yes. I got your garlic. You got it? Okay, you got my garlic. Okay, yeah. let's crush that up and we're going to throw it in a pan over here. All right. Is everyone all right? Okay. Is that Fabio? Is Fabio all right? Okay. If he wasn't, I would be running over there right now. Okay. All right, so we're cooking this lamb, and then we're going to, this is pretty traditionally. Remember, it's been cooked. That's perfect. What's that? No, no, I want holes because it's going to burn that way. And let's, what else? We got some aromatics. I'm going to throw some garlic in the pan, a little bit of sage, 
some thyme. We need some more garlic if we have it. Do we have any more? I'm gonna put a little butter in this pan. All right, now we're, this, someone asked me earlier, like what's the favorite thing to cook? Uh, take a little bit of that liquid out of there because it might be too much. We want to puree. Ryan is going to puree some carrots. We've added to the recipe if you have the book or we'll do a little carrot puree. But now this is traditional cooking. And I think this is also when we do start talking about modernist cuisine and uh, molecular gastronomy, all these things, it's like this is what I love to do, right? I love the precision that like something like sous vide provides me, but this is romance. You know what I mean? That's science. This is romance. This is cooking. And they live together. You know, like, look, we sous vide, and then we finish this in a pan with garlic and butter and herbs, right? Doesn't that sound good? They're not at war. This isn't an East Coast, West Coast hip hop battle. If, you know, I mean, sorry, I'm, dating, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a mid 90s New York hip hop guy. This is not Biggie and Tupac, you know what I mean? But sometimes it's like that. We have modernist cuisine here and farm to table cooking over here, right? Does everyone love farm to table cooking? Of course. People like modernist cuisine, right? Yeah. They can live together. I often say about my food when people say, what about farm to table? I was like, well, I'm farm to nitrogen tank to table. There's still a farm and there's still a table. You can't do it without farmers, right? All right, so now you can see we're roasting this. Can you see that or do I need to move this? All right, you can see we're roasting this. And now the call fat that's on there is melting away. So you're not really eating, you're not eating the call fat. It's melting away. All right, and then I'm just gonna, I mean, this is just, this is French. This is European. This is just good cooking here. You guys, if you can't smell it, is the front row, can you guys smell anything a little bit? It smells great. Brown butter, sage, garlic, I mean, I know you want me to throw some chemicals in there, over there, but I'm not. I'm just kidding. I'm not mad at you. I'm just, no, don't be, okay, we're okay? Where's the side of the audience that you throw things back if I throw it to you? Is it Chicago, right? It's the left field bleachers? If I throw you a Salisbury lamb chop, you throw it back at me? No? Okay. I wore my Dodgers hat yesterday. So I, I didn't even know they were in town. And people were like, go back to California. I don't even live in California. Like, go back. Okay. All right. So we're just going to finish roasting this lamb. A couple of the other ingredients. We have this carrot puree. Add a little bit more coconut milk. You got it? We roasted some carrots, and then we're going to puree with some coconut milk. Yep. So add a little bit more coconut milk. And then where's our gnocchi chef? Our gnocchi chef, Danny, right? Let's give it up for Danny, pro start. You guys are from Wisconsin, the southern part of Wisconsin, right? What's the name of the town? Lake Geneva. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. They're actually doing dynamite. I mean, when I came here last year, and it was my second time that I've worked with Pro Start, I kind of wish that I had Pro Start when I was in high school. I had like, I had really like home ec. I mean, I'm dating myself. That's how old I am. Like, I made a denim backpack. Which was cool for like, it wasn't really, actually. But I, be making, I wanted to be making Salisbury lamb, lamb chops. All right, so we're roasting this off. That looks good, right? All right, we'll finish that. And then we have gnocchi. Where are the gnocchis? All right, so let's get the gnocchi on the stove. Let's get a pan on the stove. So the gnocchi we've made with, um, instead of just a traditional gnocchi, just add, keep adding liquid and let's see how you're doing. Yeah, add a little more. But you're doing it the right way. When you're making a puree or something, always add more liquid. Don't start with a lot of liquid, then it's too thin, then you have to go bust out the xanthan gum, and then you go backwards. See, the, the, the chemicals, can save you a lot sometimes when you're in a bad situation, you know? Or when you're on TV and you have to do things in like 10 seconds. All right, so yeah, we can pull that out. We don't need all of that. We'll pull the, you know, I'm gonna do this. Perfect. You're doing the right thing. All right, so we have our, our lamb chop cooking. Now we're gonna roast some of our gnocchis. Where are the gnocchis? All right, so what we did here is we made a traditional, a traditional gnocchi recipe. I don't think this blender's working. It's working. Uh, it's that, these blenders always work, first of all. <laughs> That's, that's my tip, you know, these blend, everything, everything always works. No, um, they are actually. All right, so good, so here we go. We'll add a little more liquid, and you're good. Just, there's no pressure. No one's getting sent home tonight, Ryan. No one's going home. Exactly, no, we're good. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more, or even just regular, even just a splash of water would be fine. There's, you got coconut milk behind you. All right, so we're browning some butter. You can leave it on there, let, get it nice and brown. So we made, we made these with rye flour, a little bit of rye flour. Because I feel like rye is rye and lamb. 
sounds like it was meant to be. Don't you agree? Um, plus, we, we, you know, we, we like to have fun. So why not just make them traditional? Whisk? Fabio left. He's not, he's texting like he's on Twitter. You know, you following him on Twitter? Italian lesson 319 I got this morning from you. We want to know more about your personal life on Twitter, Fabio. We don't want to know how to make gnocchi. Save it for your blog. Well, I couldn't make gnocchi because you picked the recipe first. Oh, fair enough. I picked there right. You go. So, sabotage is basically so what So today he's I have to be on Twitter rather than make gnocchi. The there we go. Let's set up around. Sorry. What do you say? I know it was cute and adorable, but I didn't hear what you said. Well, until he pays the bill, it's okay. What I'm doing, I'm tweeting about you right now on Twitter. I'm sure you are. Say how cute you are making my grandma's recipe gnocchi with a pink shirt on it. Uh <laughs> That's cute. That is cute. First that's of all, honest. doesn't your football team wear pink? No, that's purple. That's well, white. Aren't, aren't you a Juventus fan? No. <laughs> I always like to tell him the wrong team that he doesn't root for, and then I he know. gets upset. That's Palermo. Oh, it's Palermo. Sorry. Correct. No, but that's okay. You're still cute in pink. Nice. I wore pink for you. I, I appreciate it. I'm giving you a compliment. Don't get so defensive. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> Are you freaking out? Actually, I just can't even hear a word you're saying, to be honest with you. It's, well, you're I'm just answering. answering. I don't even know you're, what you're asking. <laughs> you're answering, though. I did it for you. See how I do it? I love it. It doesn't you even matter what you say. If I say that, it works. You guessed all the answer right. Nice. All right, so now we're going to roast these gnocchi, which, by the way, your mama would never make rye gnocchi. And she would never roast it either. And she would never even wear a pink shirt. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. You guys are going to come check us out later. We're doing the Restaurants Rock show tonight. Who's coming to the restaurant? Restaurant rocks. After party, Fabio's staying up all night. All right, so we're gonna roast this gnocchi. Uh, a little bit more, li more liquid. We wanna be a smooth, like baby food. Smooth baby food. We're good. All right, how are we doing on time? We're good? Everyone's good? Threshold of boredom? No? All right. Did you just toss that around? Yeah. See, that's what I love. I love when you have good cooking instinct. You know what I mean? That's the main thing I think when, we're, when I'm cooking with ProStart is like, they're, they're at such an advanced level, they don't even know it. Like, you guys were like, are we going on stage? Like, they were so nervous about being on stage, but they're, they're, they're doing great. And you saw that, you're like, I don't care I'm on stage, the gnocchi needs to be tossed. In her head, she's like, stop talking to Fabio and start cooking, right? So that's perfect. So we have some brown butter, carrot puree's done, and then uh, where's the, the, the honey mixture? Okay, M more liquid, so it looks like baby food. More liquid. Perfect, so then some chopped herbs. Do you have the chopped herbs? All right, go, go chop the herbs real quick. All right, so you can see that, yeah. Oh, that looks nice. It looks nice. Oh, this is my Fabio. This looks beautiful. He, he also makes really great gnocchi. You do, you make great gnocchi. He's got like a crowd over there. They're all here to see Fabio. No one's even paying attention to it. All right, so great. So we have this brown butter. We have this rye gnocchi. We add a little bit of caraway to the gnocchi as well, kind of really emphasize that rye, right? Even though caraway and rye are different things, but we kind of associate caraway seed with rye. It's a mental sort of thing. It's like even if you want to cook, if you're cooking for kids, right? Or you want to cook with less sugar in your diet, which, I, which I'm trying to do right now. If you use cinnamon and vanilla, it tricks your mind to think that things are sweet because we're so familiar with vanilla and cinnamon being associated with ice cream and desserts. But they're not sweet, vanilla and cinnamon. They're, you know, they're not sugar on their own. All right. Questions, comments, concerns? Yes. We're Thank you. Hi, Richard. Nice, big fan. Um, Thank you. After you won Top Chef, more, more you, I saw advertisements for a show that you had, but then I never saw the show. Uh, I, I, I don't know what it was called, but um, it was on the Sci-Fi or Science Network? We, I, did a, I did a special <laughs> two-part episode for Science Channel okay. called Blaze Off. I did not name it. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. I mean, So it was uh, just two parts. It was just two parts. Okay. Yes. Missed it. I'm sorry. Are, do you want more of, of me on TV? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and there's more coming. Like I said, Life After Top Chef. I just had a, a special on Cooking Channel as well called Reinventing the Meal, if any of you guys saw that, which was really neat. You did see that? Thank you. And we really went to the farmers, which was the most important part about that show to me is we went to some real great farmers. It wasn't one of these shows where we're learning how to make Skittles. You know what I mean? Or like we're in a factory. Like we were like... I was literally doing things that as a chef I've never done that I'm embarrassed, like pulling an egg from, from a chicken, right? Yeah, is that, yes? Yes, no, okay. Like I've never done that, but like that feeling, like as a chef, like a warm egg, like it, you'll never, like it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. So we took it to the farmers, which I thought was the best part about that. All right, and now we have a little bit of a glaze that we're gonna, 
uh, code our lamb with here. Did you find a brush of some sorts? So you're going to come up here. Bree's going to come up here. And now we're going to take this mixture of honey, uh, cumin, and rosemary, which sounds like that's classic flavor combination. We're just going to glaze our lamb a little bit, all right? So let's actually warm this up a little bit and then just glaze that lamb. All right, we have our gnocchi, chopped herbs, lemon juice, lemon juice. All right, here we go. Your puree's done more. It needs to be smooth. It needs to be like baby. We don't want to choke the baby. No, it's real like a baby. Don't, don't, perfect. Yeah, let's see how that looks and let it, let it spin and... All right, a little bit of lemon juice, some sage, some, some rosemary, and a little bit of lemon juice, and that's our beautiful gnocchi. Our carrot puree is almost done. And then we have a quick sauce that we made over here, which was a little bit of lamb scraps. The carrots, by the way, are lamb fat, so we trimmed this lamb as a little lamb fat. So instead of using olive oil, olive oil is great, I think, when you're making especially a vegetarian dish, and there's olives and tomatoes and all those beautiful things. But if, you know, I think we underestimate animal fat sometimes. It's like, if you have lamb sitting around your house or your restaurant, you have lamb fat, render it. Use the lamb fat to cook your lamb chops in, and you're going to make that lamb more delicious, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah, so we'll warm that up, and then we'll glaze that lamb. We have a little bit of this sauce here. Do you have any xanthan gum on you, by the way? We could thicken this sauce. We don't? I'm serious. Okay. We'll put a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I found out on Top Chef that my lineage, yes, is uh, from Worcester. Is it, that's, am I pronouncing it correctly? If there's any Brits in the audience? No? But that's pretty cool. Like, I'm a chef from Worcester. And it's Worcestershire sauce. It's pretty, no? No, I, th I think it's cool. Um, and here's my little rant on umami. Umami. Still a big buzzword or no? Is it a trend or no? Di dying? It's not a trend anymore. But you guys know what umami is. If you don't, it is not just a Brazilian soccer star or supermodel's name. It would be a good soccer player's name, don't you think? Okay. Um, umami is the flavor of savory, basically. Mushrooms, cheese, shellfish, all of these things that have the, the, the flavor of savory, what scientifically makes your mouth water. Worcestershire sauce is an umami bomb. So like you see a lot of recipes with like a drip of Worcestershire and New England clam chowder. There's a reason. It's like it's umami, it's umami heavy. Most of the, the, the most popular food in the world is umami heavy. There's really truth to, you know, umami making food better. Cheeseburger, a bacon cheeseburger, umami bomb. Slice of pizza, umami bomb, you know? The best Asian food, umami bomb, right? I want to say umami bomb five more times. It's hard. I said it three really fast. How are we doing on the puree? Almost. Give it one more whirl. Okay. This is going to be, we're going to reenact a scene from the movie Miracle. Ryan, we're going to keep skating until they turn the lights off in this place. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I joke. Has anyone seen the movie Miracle? Of course. All right. All right. Look at that. That glaze looks great. Now we're ready to, let's clear off this table. Let's clear everything off. It's surgery time. Now we're going to put our food together. Ryan has the carrot puree. We have these amazing rye gnocchis. We have a sauce simmering away. And we have our Salisbury lamb chop that we're going to carve right now. All right, and this is when I use, we need a plate. We also need a plate. Yes, chef. I have not heard one, can, can, we, can I just get a universal yes, chef? Yes, chef. Nice, I've always wanted to do that. Thank you, no, chef. There are only three answers. Yes, chef, no, chef, and I don't know, chef. And we have another question. Two of them right will get you here, out of the kitchen chef pretty good. Yes. Hi, chef. Um, ever since you made the bacon ice cream, I can't get it out of my head. Is there any way to, you're going to make that and we could buy it in the store? Bacon ice cream. Um, wow. I mean, probably someone in here can make, me, can make that happen for me. Uh, I don't know. But um, I, I'm not planning on marketing bacon ice cream. Um, but maybe I should. I have this problem where after I do something once, I kind of start to not like it. Like, a, like, a, like an artist, like I'm like, ah, bacon ice cream was so last NRA show, you know? Um, but you know what I mean? But thank you. I mean, it is delicious. I mean, you know, when you talk, start talking about something, this bacon ice cream probably sounds delicious to most of you. You're all food people. Some people, though, would still go, ah, yuck. But if you think about a piece of bacon touching maple syrup on, the, on a breakfast plate, I bet you most of you then will say, oh, that's delicious. Well, what's really the difference, right? It's a sort of a sweet version of smoke and salt and like it works. All right, so here's our, our Salisbury lamb chop, dripping with our honey glaze. Nice. That's when you know you've made it, when like people give it up for ingredients. Like that's, I think when Emeril knew he made it, when, you, when he was like, accidentally one day just said pork fat and everyone went bananas. Like I don't think it was intentional. Awesome. All right, so now we'll, we'll, we'll slice into this. Let's see. All right, I know again, it's going to look a little pink, but remember, it's cooked sous vide for already two, two and a half hours, three hours. 
right? So there's the inside of our lamb chop. This would be more the appropriate time for applause. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Smells delicious. I almost ate that piece. I do. I really like to get, really get close to it. All right. So let's put this dish together. How's our puree? Is it delicious? It's good. No, it's good. No worries. No worries. We need a spoon. We need a few spoons. Spoons. And now we're going to plate. So this is something you too. Um, let's be honest. This is a nice way too. Like I can put this on my menu for like a couple chops for like 14 bucks as an entree. So like I kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm over the stage of only foie gras, only cabbage. Like those things are great. But let's be honest. We can't, we can't cook like that in restaurants if we want to stay in business. Because, you know, I mean, and I'm, my market right now is Atlanta, but I'm in New York every week. Chicago, LA. I mean, you know, when, when, you're, when you have entrees at $40, it's hard. It's hard to get people to come back to your restaurant. We, and for the Spence that we're about to open, it's still a big metropolitan city like Atlanta. We, we want to keep all of our, entre our main plates around $20, $22 max. I thought that was cool. I don't know. And then if you want the other stuff, we can do that too. We'll ship some, ship some foie gras in there for you. All right, so here we go. So we have our chops. Are these guys making fun of me behind me? Are they doing anything that I should be aware of? You guys are great. You're awesome. You're so awesome. Okay. All right. When I came in, they were all sleeping in the back watching President Clinton. Sorry to call you out like that. It was awesome. I should have taken a picture. No, two of you are awake. Who was awake? Some, one of you were awake. No? Nice. Nice. Spoon. Okay, these are the spoons. All right. We'll see how this works. All right, so we're going to just kind of drop our, our puree down on our plate. I still love purees. I know they're kind of out of, uh, they're becoming out of season. And why not? This is just for you, you know, a little flourish. You wear raincoats and helmets in the first row. That was last year, okay. Wow, you guys should taste that. One, it needs salt. Um, but two, you really taste the lamb. We cooked the, we cooked the carrots in the lamb fat. So like it's really like this fresh carrot, spice, and a little bit of lamb on the back palate. And then I think we'll stand these up because they look, they look nice enough to stand up. All right. All right. Why not? All right. And then we'll drop some of our gnocchi down. Yeah, could have used salt. Did we put any salt in that? That's my bad if we didn't. Did we salt the carrots? It's all about salt, pepper, and vinegar. It's not about xanthan gum and liquid nitrogen. All right, and then we'll just drop our gnocchis down here. Normally probably wouldn't do a gnocchi with a puree. But why not? See, I'm, I'm constantly editing. You know, I think that's, you guys saw me on the show, like I worry about everything. Where's Fabio? I'm worrying right now, Fabio. Is this gonna get me sent home? It might, you never know. You're worried? You should be worried. All right. How about some uh, plushes of parsley? We have any fresh herbs? We can get a little parsley salad real quick. Okay. Yeah, any, anything. How about some cilantro for Fabio? He loves cilantro. I know you hate cilantro. All right, a little bit of the sauce. And this was just, again, some of the, a little bit of the scrap of the, uh, the lamb trimmings. I think also when we start presenting food, especially in modernist food, doesn't, food, doesn't modern food look really dry sometimes on the plate? It's all of these beautiful little precious dots and cubes and little everything sort of all over the place. I think we've, sometimes we lose track of like sauce is good. You know what I mean? Just because just sauce makes your plate look ugly doesn't mean you should put less sauce on the plate. So that's a, you know, another example of sort of sometimes we're thinking about the art before what really matters, flavor and taste. And This is a rant. All right, so there we go. Um, you guys feeling good? It looks okay? No, you're not feeling so good. Bree, I'm gonna put you on the spot. What's the matter? No, you're good? Okay. Bree thinks we're getting sent home. If we get sent home, we're all going together. Okay? We're all going together. A little lemon juice. That lemon, we had a lemon somewhere. Yeah, lemon. It's like surgery. Lemon, scalpel. All right, a little, little freshness. Awesome. Everyone doing good? When I played, I stopped talking. It's the first time the whole, the whole show that I stopped talking. Some of you are like, it's good, actually, when you don't talk so much. Yes. Why not? 
and I like things falling off the plate. I don't think any plate, even in my restaurant, I like each plate to look a little bit different. I'm not one of those, it's gotta be just like this. Let it go, let it go. All right, so there we go, it's our Salisbury lamb chops. <laughs> Questions, comments, or concerns? I don't know where Questions we are on time. Questions for Chef oh, Richard wow. Blaze, oh. right over here. The pink shirt. Oh, right there. The back. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi, I Chef. I live in, uh, I live in Atlanta, Rocky. and I wanted to know, uh, out of your restaurants, which one is the best or your favorite restaurant in Atlanta? Of all of my restaurants, which one of my restaurants are my favorites? That's like naming your favorite kid. Like, it's... No, your preference. Like, which one would you eat more of? Not, not my restaurant? Yeah, your restaurants. I'm I live sorry. in Atlanta, so if I wanted to go to one, which one would be the one you would tell me to go to first? Oh, well, I would tell you to go to Flip Burger or HD1 for lunch, and then the Spence for dinner. That's what I would tell you, yeah. Um, outside of my restaurants, um, you know, I mean, Atlanta has a lot of great restaurants. My two favorites, I'm answering a question you didn't ask. Um, but I love Bacchanalia, which is like the epitome of fine dining, especially in Atlanta. And I, and I always say this answer, and it's gonna, it might freak you out when I say it, but it's one of my favorite restaurants in the world, Chipotle. Those are my favorite restaurants in Atlanta. Tell us about your favorite flavor. recipes in your books, Chef Blaze. Uh, favorite recipe in my book. Well, I have a book upcoming next, this time next year. When I come back next time, you'll be able to hopefully buy that book and have me sign it or something like that. Uh, but yes, my first cookbook, it will be available pre-order sometime around this holiday season. Uh, really excited about it. Didn't know how hard it was to make a cookbook. Um, it's on Clarks Clarkson Potter, which is Random House. Um, super excited about it. And it's about creative home cooking. So it's not going to be the coffee table book just to look at some pretty plates of food. It's a book that I hope that you'll open up and actually cook from from time to time. And these two books are for sale here today. Books that are for sale today, of course. Well, I'm here uh, uh, talking about the Top Chef Quickfire Cookbook, which I'm in. And um, I, I'm not sure what recipes I have in here, but I think we have one in there for like vegetarian tacos, which was great. When uh, Chicago great and amazing chef Rick Bayless was the judge, uh, and I won that challenge. Um, <laughs> So I think that recipe is in there as well. But another great book, especially like quick fire. Uh, you know, when we start talking, I came out and I opened, I said, this is kind of like a quick fire. Everyone who like watches Top Chef, you're, you're in a quick fire challenge every day when you cook, right? If you, you come home from work and you have to feed your family in 30 minutes, that's a quick fire challenge. So like, uh, there's a lot of applicable recipes in there for that. Is it true that you ran in the New York Marathon? You say that like, like that would be impossible. I can tell I look a little chubby from the back up there, my pink shirt. But um, yes, I did run the New York City Marathon last year. I am running the New York City Marathon again this year um, as uh, for something called Alliance for a Healthier Generation, which is part of the Bill Clinton Foundation. Uh, last year we raised $30,000. Uh, this year, um, you know, my goals are set to be $50,000 plus. So I'll be hitting you up on Twitter for donations very soon, I'm sure. Uh, but yes, I, I, I run often. I love running in Chicago, quite honestly. I'd ride on the lake, like from my hotel to Soldier Field, which is like eight miles, was an amazing, amazing run, especially when it's really windy and the water's crashing up on the lake. And it's like a video game. Like you don't know if you're gonna get sucked into the lake. It's pretty, pretty fun, it's fun. We have another question right over here, Chef Blaze. I'm trying to figure out how a chef that has Krispy Kreme milkshakes and uh, foie gras milkshake stays as uh, trim as you are. Oh, well you're kind, first of all, for calling me trim. Um, yeah, I've been known to puree a donut in a blender and serve it as a milkshake. Um, I don't have them every day. Um, yeah, that's probably what it is. Yes, thank you. Um, you. Listen, I mean, I think at restaurants, it's all about flavor. I mean, I do a lot of work um, teaching families how to cook healthy. Obviously, I try and cook healthy for my family. Having two young daughters has really changed my world as far as even from a chef's perspective. I did a 28-day vegan stint at one point two years ago that really reset my whole framework as a chef because if you, I did 28 days, no sugar, uh, total vegan. And the first, I remember I was in LA when I broke that fast and I was at a Dodgers game and I had a Dodger dog and a big diet beverage. And it was like, it was like the first time I ever tasted salt and sugar again. And it was pretty enlightening to me. Um, so I, I try, I monitor things. And then I do things like I did last night, like order a cheeseburger at midnight in the hotel room. I'm awful. I run to eat. There it is. I run to eat. We have another question yes. right over here. We loved uh, watching you on Top Chef, but what was it like to be on Iron Chef America? Talk about that experience. Sure, Iron Chef America, I've, I did one challenge where I was the challenger, I went up against Mario Batali and lost in a scandalous close vote. Scandalous. 
The, the, the ingredient was chickpeas. I made chickpea ice cream and chickpea noodles, and uh, Mario, who I love, made five versions of hummus. <laughs> like one with caviar, one with black truffles, like, you know. Um, I'm joking, I'm not bitter about it at all. It was six years ago. Um, and then I did a bunch of episodes as Cat Cora's sous chef. So I've been on both sides of the Iron Chef uh, kitchen stadium. I've been a challenger and, and part of the Iron Chef team. It's a, it's, a different, it's a different game. I've done other competitive cooking shows that you haven't even seen yet. Um, so I, I've kind of done all of them, to be honest. And they're just different games. I think when you look at Top Chef or Iron Chef, what you're looking at is uh, someone who runs track but runs different distances or someone who runs track, but Iron Chef might be more of a, a relay because you bring your sous chefs with you. So you're bringing more, it's a team sport, Iron Chef. Whereas Top Chef is an individual sport. You know, maybe you might get thrown together with Fabio, hopefully not. Um, he's not even paying attention. Um, but that's the biggest difference. But I, it's, they're both amazing, they're both real. I think that's, you know, when sometimes when people watch these cooking shows, they're like, ah, you know, I've seen enough TV or I've seen a commercial, it's not a commercial. It's literally an hour, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you see is how, how it plays out. And I find that com competitive cooking on TV, I will continue to do it because it brings inspiration to me. You know, um, win or lose, and I've been on both sides in every competition. And, um, but what you get from having to sort of be in a jam session as a chef, you know, as a musician, you go cut an album in a studio, you do it till you get it right. And in a, in a restaurant, you do it again until you get it right. But cooking on TV is, is a jam session, it's improv. And sometimes great inspiration happens from it. Anybody else? Questions for Chef Blaze? Way over there. We're on our way. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm from Lansing, Michigan. Um, it's a two-part question. What is the, the best thickener for sauces, in your opinion? And do you ever see yourself dethroning Ramsey the chef? Well, OK, let me see for if I heard the question. a little controversy. Um, the first one, best, best thickener for a sauce, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, not, not to take a cop-out answer, but I think it kind of depends on what sauce, is it hot or cold, and you know, some of the things we were talking about. Xanthan gum is great for a cold, cooly sort of thing. If you use too much, it gets almost like a snotty sort of texture to it. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with you know, a natural reduction, you know, to take the non-molecular answer to it. Um, and then even like, I, there was a day a couple, like when I was a younger chef last year, um, when I would say things like roux, roux is disgusting. It's so old and who would ever cook with roux, you know? But I think there's a place for it. Like I don't think you can do a good gumbo without roux. I think that would be sacrilegious almost, right? So like I've kind of, I think that that answer has many, has many answers to that. And then de dethroning Ramsey? In what regard? Like, um, uh, like taking over Hell's Kitchen? Sure. I'd love to do that. I don't think I will, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know. I, I just think it, like, his role in TV gives a negative uh, persona to the head chef. Oh, is, uh, is his, well, I'm sorry, I, what was the question? So I'm having trouble hearing. Like, the, the way he conducts himself. Yes. Is very negative. I think, uh, again, I don't know uh, Chef Ramsay personally. I gotta be careful what I say. No, um, but I mean, I think, you know, I think that's how some kitchens are run. And I think that it's okay to showcase that that's how some kitchens are run. As long as we don't think that all kitchens are run that way. Um, and unfortunately, I mean, even myself, I said, like, there are times when a chef has to be, has to use negative reinforcement sometimes. You know, and as long as it's legal, uh, sometimes negative reinforcement is necessary. Um, again, I, I try and have become more of an educator, but I have also found as I, you know, and more of an educator that sometimes you can't just be a soft, friendly chef all the time. Like you can't. Sometimes you have to get mad at someone because they burned something. You know, um, that doesn't mean you have to call them a raging donkey or something like that. Um, and some of it's TV, of course. But uh, he's an amazing chef. All right. Thank you. How much drama do they manufacture in the competition? Because it again, seems I can only very speak, dramatic. I can only speak to shows that I've been a part of, and none of it's manufactured. You know, um, it, it's. And I think even when we start talking about editing, I mean, I think, you know, you, it's, you really can't change someone's personality through editing. You can take a, a comment they said, just like a politician or a, a sports or an athlete, and you can put a comment they said in a different context and make it seem a little different, but you really can't change someone's personality. You've all met Fabio. He's Fabio, right? Is he, any really, is he really any different? 
No. Um, you know, and then hopefully, I, hopefully I'm the same way. But, you know, again, I don't know how other reality shows are, are shot, like the real world or Housewives or things like that. Um, but, yeah, as far as competitive cooking, I haven't seen any drama. Like, and do you get drama. recognized wherever you go? Uh, I, I get recognized here and there, for sure. Sometimes I get recognized and people don't know who I am, and that's my favorite. So I've had a couple of instances where um, I was in an airport and someone was like, oh, my God, I, I love you so much. I love your show. Can you sign this for me? And I sign the autograph, and I'm just so taken back by this. They're so nice to me, and then they leave, and they're like, I loved you on American Idol. You were amazing. <laughs> and... I took it as a compliment. 50 million people watch American Idol. Um, Five million watch Top Chef, so anyway. Do but, you sing, by the way? Do I sing? No, I do. I, I should have, yeah. That would have been a perfect time to sing. You might be on American Idol next and then season. I, I learned for, for, yeah, for any of you who are in this world of, you know, maybe you just were on Chopped or you're going on Top Chef or whatever, and you, like, you start to get recognized. Never tell people, though, like if they ask you, oh, I know you from somewhere. Where are you from? Never tell them what you think the answer is. Like, so one of my, like, again, right off of Top Chef, I don't know if this ever happened to Fabio, probably not. Someone came up to me like, I know you from somewhere. I can't put my finger on it. And I was like, oh, Top Chef? Like, I was like, that's such a, such a jerky thing to say. Like, oh, you mean the TV show? The Emmy Award TV show? Top Chef? I didn't say it like that. But I was like, oh, Top Chef. And they're like, no, aren't you Craig Wilson? Didn't we play intramural softball together? <laughs> so I, I call that my Craig Wilson moment. So now, unfortunately, if I run into someone and they say, I know you, but I don't know, I, I just let him play the game. It could last a whole subway ride, but I, I will not say it. I was like, college, maybe? Like, I won't, because then you're like, and then they're like, no, and then it's embarrassing. Sorry. Any other questions, comments, or concerns for Good. Chef Hopefully Richard there are Blaze? No concerns. One more in the front. Right here. Where are you going to be going to dinner tonight? Like, where, where in where, Chicago? Yeah. Where in Chicago? Um, I'm going to try and squeeze in a quick little run. And then me and Fabio and Spike are hosting uh, uh, an uh, after party tonight, Restaurant Rocks. Hopefully some of you will be there. So I will be eating there tonight um, and hanging out and saying hi to all of you who show up. So that's where I'll be dining tonight. And that is a benefit for Pro Start. These kids here are a part of that. And you can get tickets for that at the registration desk. And you definitely do not want to miss it because, I mean, the guys are going to be there. You're going to get to hang out with them and have a good time. Now, Chef, um, before we go, yes. I think they all want to know, how do you get the going on? Oh, yeah. I, I, I told you early in the show, uh, if anyone remembers, but this is uh, equal parts liquid nitrogen and duck fat, which weird animals will follow you home if you do that. And it, and it is a real recipe that will be in the cookbook. Well, speaking, and speaking of the cookbook, Chef Richard Blaze will be right over there in that corner in just a few minutes to sign your cookbook. I, 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 have you cooked everything? Are we, are we good? I, I believe so. Okay. Yes. We're oh, there's another question. Next. Did we see one? No. We're good. Okay, let's give it up for Chef Richard Blaze, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Did we have fun? Thank you very much, Chef Richard Blaze. You've been wonderful. Right, thanks. And he will be right over there in just a few minutes.